do. Good. Is it now? Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to Tottenham Hotspur's training ground for this media conference with Gareth Southgate and John Stones ahead of tomorrow's international against Brazil at Wembley. Just a reminder that to ensure a fair squad of questions, uh, if we can keep it to three questions per each in the first round, and if we have time we'll come back to you at the end. Uh, but before we get into the questions, uh, Gareth has just got a message to relay. Yeah, clearly we've just heard about the um, Princess of Wales and we just wanted to send our thoughts and best wishes to her and all of her family. Um, remarkably dignified statement that she gave and uh, yeah, we obviously have a very close relationship with the family so uh, we're very upset to hear the news but uh, uh, hopefully everything goes well. Thanks for doing that Gareth. Um, can I jump straight into team news um, because your captain has been struggling for a few days. How is Harry Kane and does he stand any chance of playing against Brazil or indeed Belgium for in four days time? Uh, no, no tomorrow, no, no Harry Kane, no Jordan Henderson, no Cole Palmer. Um, I would say Cole and Hendo have a better chance uh, of Belgium than Harry. Uh, he'd be extremely doubtful for that. That's a real blow to you when you'd already got, uh, I reckon, <laughs> a dozen players that weren't available to you to select because of injury in the first place. And you deliberately picked Brazil and Belgium. I suppose, mm. so that you could try and pitch your, your strongest team against them. Um, that's impossible now, isn't it? You've got to think of something different. Yeah, but it's, it's, um, it means that it's a brilliant opportunity for other players. We need to see other players ahead of the Euros. And if we were playing lesser teams, you'd still have that little question in your mind. If they played well, OK, well, how are they going to be against the next level of opposition? So from our perspective... Um, it, it, it's a great um, exercise and a, a, a great opportunity, really. There's been an awful lot of speculation this week linking you with the top job at one of the biggest clubs in world football, in Manchester United. Now, you can't control that, and you've made it very clear, actually, that you don't really want to talk about this sort of subject. Your contract runs until December with the FA. But I wonder whether you find that link flattering, and I wonder whether you're prepared for what could be a, a quite a... A, a, a string of this sort of story, a summer of speculation, if you like, about your future? Uh, I think there are two things from my point of view. One is I'm the England manager. Um, I've got <laughs> one job, basically, um, to try and deliver a European Championship. Um, clearly, before that, two important games this week. Uh, and the second thing is Manchester United have a manager. And I think it's always completely disrespectful when there's any speculation about a manager that's in place. I'm um, president of the LMA, so I don't have any time for that sort of thing, really. Hi, Gareth. In the squad or in the camp, uh, when you have the group together, is there a different feeling before you name the, the training, training squad before a major championship? Um, well, look, I think everybody recognises that we only have two matches before we would name what will probably need to be a longer squad um, at first in the summer. Um, but we don't need to build these games up. The quality of the opponent does that. The timing in the year does that. Um, what I've seen are new players that have come in and fitted in brilliantly. Our more regular players and our senior players make that as comfortable as possible. I think if you talk to any of the boys that have come in, they would, uh, they would identify that. Um, and we're really looking forward to the challenge of the two games. I'm sure you've seen as well, there's been a lot of discussion about the New England kit and the St George's flag being changed on the back of the, the shirt. I just wondered what you made of the reaction to it so far. Um, well, it's not been high on my list of priorities, but um, yeah, it depends which, which bit it is because um, I don't know if the debate is about the St George flag needing to be on the England shirt because obviously it hasn't always been. Um, I think the most important thing that has to be on an England shirt are the three lions. It's our iconic symbol. It, what, it is what distinguishes us, not only from football teams around the world, but from England rugby and England cricket. It's the thing that when I put my kit on at Burnham Beaches 30 years ago and looked in the mirror, I clearly don't look at my face too often when I do that. Um, but the three lions really stood out. So, um, 
yeah, then I suppose what you're really asking is, should we be tampering with the cross of St. George? Um, in my head, um, is if it's not a red cross on a white background, then it isn't the cross of St. George anyway. So um, hard question to answer, really, because it's, it's presumably some artistic take on uh, which I, I, I'm not creative enough to understand, really. Is it slightly disappointing that it takes away what should be a great showcase tomorrow, England v Brazil at Wembley? It's not, it's not taking anything away from what we've been preparing for all day. Gareth, can I ask you about the man to your left? He's had a really great season and really solidified himself as one of the strongest members of your England squad over recent years. Not always been easy, like so many players of his squad. How much has he impressed you this season? Well... Um, it's been fabulous to watch his journey um, from being a right back. I'm going to embarrass him now. Being a right back in the under 21s in the first game we picked, moving across to centre back. Um, we always knew that he had a special talent with the ball and um, incredibly comfortable player with the ball since, since he was a really young player. Um, he also values defending. You know, he's, I hold him up as an example to young defenders, um, not just because of the way he uses the ball, but the fact that he's one of the best blockers in the game, that he takes his defending seriously. He wants that to be an important part of his game. So, of course, at the moment, he's also stepping into <coughs> midfield and, and fulfilling that role really well, uh, that dual role. So um, he's tactically aware. I, I, I can't speak highly enough of how he is to work with. And John, over to you. I've just been with the Brazil camp and speaking to Bruno about Gareth Southgate and, and should he t take the job at Manchester United? And he said, well, it would be good not to have him as a coach of England. He's very fond, respected within the world of football. You probably don't want him as a manager against Manchester City, do you? You don't no. have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think Gareth, I think he, he, he said it really well. Um, I'm with him on that, that he... I personally, you know, want him here, but um, I, I agree that it'd be disrespectful as well, you know, to um, speak about a team that, that already has a manager and, and and obviously there's no certainties or anything. It's just cropped up in, in my eyes out of nowhere. So yeah. And Gareth, um, we've talked about the team '66 being being recognised in, in that kit, but there will be tributes to many friends in football that we've lost ahead of the match, particularly Terry Venables, who had such a big impact on you. How much of an influence did he have on the systems you've put in place to bring through the likes of Cobby that everyone's so excited to see jump up two age groups this weekend? Well, um, firstly, it's brilliant to be able to honour Terry at the game. Um, when you look at English coaches, um, yeah, we, haven't, we haven't got a huge number of English coaches that have had big jobs around European football. Um, Terry and Bobby are probably the two most high profile, mm -hmm. really, both having managed Barcelona. Terry was a brilliant man manager, um, tactically very inventive, um, a little bit different in terms of um, the young players because we have a different uh, group coming through and the team in 96 was an extremely experienced team so but he was brilliant at managing those big characters and um uh yeah he he i remember going i mean i wasn't young but 25 when i first went in he had the respect of all of the senior players that was clear and um you, you'd have heard them all speak in in recent times so it's lovely that he's been recognized it's lovely that a lot of that squad are coming to the game to do that as well um, because we want them to feel part of the England family. We think that's important. Maybe we haven't always recognised our former players as well as we might have done before the last few years. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that will add another touch to what's a, a very special occasion. James. Hi, both. Good luck tomorrow. Um, with Harry out, um, this is presumably an opportunity for Ollie Watkins or Ivan Tony. I, is it fair to say that they're probably both playing for one place in the squad, assuming Harry's fit? Or can you find space in the 23-man squad for three sort of specialist centre-forwards? Well, that, that is a decision we will have to make. Um, 
because clearly a nine is a specialist position and they have different attributes um, and that would depend a little bit on injury status in, in other positions in the squad um, and also having perhaps players that can play in more than one role. So um, I think both of them are aware that um, y you know the, the opportunity is a big one. Um, but you know they're both they're both in good form. They, they've both had time with us. Ollie's been with us more recently, of course, and uh, has done well in the games he's played. He's had a fabulous season for his club. Ivan, since he's come back into Brentford's team, has had a, the impact we we expected him to. So uh, they're they're two very very good players. Do you want us to tell us which one's playing? Um, well, did the Brazil manager give you his team <laughs> in his press conference? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think he would. <laughs> worth a try. Um, there's obviously two big games over the next few days. Do, do, do you feel like the, the, the sort of final step in this team's development is to is to consistently win these games, to consistently dictate these these big games against the top opposition? Well, we have started doing that over the last few years. Um, you know, I'm reading that we've only beaten Brazil four times out of 26 games, something like that. You know, there are lots of matches against big opponents that we don't have outstanding records against that this team have managed to beat, Italy twice being uh, an example, uh, Spain. So uh, it's um, another opportunity for us to put a marker down, uh, create a little bit more history for these boys. Um, but also we're going to be tested in every aspect of our game and that's going to be a great challenge for us. And, and just finally from me, I know you've already spoken about the United link, but... Is it still your intention to make a decision on your future after the Euros? Uh, I, th I think I've answered this um, every time I've sat with you. Um, yeah, I, my focus is the European Championship. If we did something, a contract here before, everybody would say would be saying, why are you signing a contract before Euros where you've got to prove yourself? Um, I'm certainly not sp going to speak to anybody else uh, ahead of that. I never have. I've been in eight years in the job. I wouldn't entertain speaking to anybody else when I'm in a job. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. I think it does. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, James. Before we come back to the guys in the front row, any Simon? Just come on, Simon. Thanks. It's just a quick question about Harry Kane. If, if he's not going to be available, or you don't think he's going to be available, what does it say about him that he wants to be part of the camp at what is obviously a key time? And, and Luke Shaw, I guess, as well, mm. spending some of his rehab with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's increasingly become the culture. I mean, Bukayo had a couple of days with us as well. Um, Hendo is obviously doing everything he can to be available. You know, sometimes I think people think, um, oh, they're not fit, they're ruled out of both games. But, you know, you have a few more days until the second game and um, you always want to try to uh, to use that time if we can. Um, so we'll we'll see where, the, where those boys get to. But it's, of course, great when your captain um, sets that example. And uh, as you, you're right, it's also been great that Luke and Manchester United's medical team have linked really well with ours to allow that to happen. Thanks, Rob. John, apologies. We, we don't mean to <laughs> leave you out, but we don't see him very often and we have to ask him an awful lot of stuff. There's always a lot on the agenda. Um, I mean, look, this is a friendly against Brazil, but, but obviously they're one of the superpowers of world football. They might not be in the best run of form themselves right now, but. This is a special fixture to be involved in, isn't it, for a player? Yeah, definitely. I don't see um, friendly <coughs> games as a friendly game. You know, it's um, <coughs> us against one of the best team, uh, best teams in the world over the past, I don't know how many years. Um, a team full of uh, top players play um, in numerous countries around the world. Um, a lot of different attributes, a bit different this time with injuries and, and, and a new manager, as Gareth said. But um, nonetheless, a, a, a great test for us as a team to um, to get something out of it and, and move on to the game on, on Tuesday and hopefully finish this um, this week off with, with two wins. The other thing is, I wonder from a player's perspective of whether there's a, a more acute awareness now that this is your last chance to impress the manager before he has to pick a squad of 23 for the next big tournament. Do you sense that mood around the camp that everybody wants to try and impress? No, definitely not. I think, I think that's uh, expected of us to, to, to turn up and, and, and give our best. 
Um, I think the, the Gareth and Steve watch pretty much every game um, that we play at club level uh, throughout the year and, and, and will do after this camp as well. So I think um, a lot can... A lot can be said while while we're here as players, um, and the culture that's been created now is um, the standards in training every day are super high. Uh, everyone's fighting for a spot, and um, if you're playing or not, you're you're part of that that team and and um, helping everyone to uh, you know achieve our goal at, uh, by the end of the 95 minutes. 95, thanks. Uh, Gareth, just briefly, how's Ben Chilwell? Uh, I mean, he came off the bench for, for Chelsea. Is he fit to play 90 minutes as far as you're concerned? Yes, he would be, yeah. Um, he yeah, missed, uh, missed the last couple of games, but um, uh, that wasn't an acute problem as such, just something that needed to settle down, and he's, he's trained all week uh, with no problems. That's great. There's great excitement around... Um, Cobby at the moment. How has he managed jumping up from another age group I in one week? How has he impressed you in this group and how much does it talk of the age groups that you've put at St George's Park that Grant Fway, Pete and Gordon have all been talking about how easy it is to come back to the same place? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> we've, we've um, been blessed really with St George's Park being built because it means that this week our under-17s have been there a couple of them have come over and worked with us. Um, our under-21s were there. So you do get that club feel, really, and hopefully that transition is as straightforward as possible because I think the players have a better chance of performing at their best level if they feel comfortable off the pitch as well. Um, with Cobby, you know, I spoke last week that we were conscious of his development, how quickly should we go. Um, I think you've always got to try to be um, make the right steps at the right time with young players um, but opportunity has presented itself and for us he was the next player in so we also didn't want to um, uh, stop that from happening and as we thought he would he's fitted in brilliantly with the group um, his level of training has been excellent uh, we, we won't hesitate to put him onto the pitch it's been flagged in some media as a bit of a battle between Vinicius Junior and, and Jude Bellingham for uh, teammates that know each other well. Has Jude gone on to surprise you again since the last international break on what he's achieving? Um, well, the last few weeks have been a bit more difficult for him. He's had the injury um, and the red card, so he's a bit of a frustration at not playing as much football in the last few weeks as he would like, which hopefully is a good thing ahead of tomorrow. Um, yeah, clearly Vinicius is a world-class player and um, that will be a, a, um, a, a good uh, battle down that side of the pitch to, to, uh, to watch. Um, but yeah, Jude is, um, you know, we're, we're super happy to have him. We're, we're very lucky to have him. Um, but he is still a 20 year old and um, you know the the success of our team is going to rely on the whole group um, he can add something that is very different um, but it's it's a team and a squad that will be successful in the summer and Vinicius having to go through extreme racism that we'd hoped had we put behind us this year the national manager saying they're going to do everything and we'll take drastic action if needed, to stamp out on the pitch on the next two internationals. We certainly hope that won't be the case. But how much has that got to be a common goal in football now? Yeah, well, clearly it has, but I, I, I don't see that being a, uh, an issue for the two games at Wembley that we have coming up. But in terms of a common consensus of both teams of protecting their players in the future? Yeah, no question. Look, we've, we've had some difficult experiences as a team. Um, we have to hope that societies around the world move forward, and um, you know we've talked at that about that at length in the past. So I think everybody knows what we um, stand for in that regard. Okay, thanks for your time, everybody. We'll call it there. Thank you. Thank you.